Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I, Gayatri Vemuri, from the Delhi School of Economics, extend a warm welcome to our distinguished speaker, Sri Suresh Narayanan, guests, esteemed faculty, and bright students to the distinguished lecture being organized under the Delhi School of Economics Diamond Jubilee Lecture Series. I would now like to request our distinguished, uh, distinguished speaker, Sri Suresh Narayanan, our director, Professor Ram Singh, and our staff advisor, Professor Paramjeet, to please get on stage and be felicitated. We are honored to have with us Sri Suresh Narayan, Distinguished DSC Alumnus, Chairman and Managing Director of Nestle India Limited as our distinguished speaker. He is accompanied by his teammates, <laughs> Vaibhav Chaturvedi, Head of Talent, South Asia Region, Aditya Patanath, Manager, Employer Branding, and Ishita Satsena, Lead Campus and Youth. We also have with us on dais, Professor Ram Singh, Director of Delhi School of Economics, and Professor Paramjeet, Staff Advisor of the DSC Students Act. Now, I'd like to invite Professor Ram Singh, Director of Delhi School of Economics, to deliver the welcome address. Thank you, Gayatri. Chief Guest of the Distinguished Lecture Series, Sri Suresh Narayananji, my colleague on the dais, Professor Paramjit, among the audience, uh, former director of Delhi School of Economics, Professor Pamidua. Among the audience, uh, we have uh, good fortune of having another illustrious alumnus of Delhi School of Economics, Dr. <laughs> Mohan Chutani. My esteemed colleagues, researchers, students, and distinguished guests. It is a matter of pride for us, for us at Delhi School of Economics, to welcome Sri Suresh Narayananji. He represents uh, the best of what Delhi School of Economics has given to this nation, this society. The DSC was established in 1949 as a center for excellence and advanced learning in research in the social sciences with Professor V. K. R. Virao as the founding director. The DSC started with the Department of Economics at its nucleus and comprises departments of economics, geography, sociology, and the former constituents of the DSC include Department of Commerce. Professor V. K. R. Virao's vision for the DSC was an institution devoted to research and teaching in economics and allied areas in social sciences, with an aim to produce students who would play an important role in economic development <laughs> and social progress of this country. And we could not have thought of a better person as a realization of Professor V. K. R. Rao's vision than Sri Suresh Narayananji. It is our pride and pleasure and honor to have him. Let's give him a big round of applause. <laughs> Throughout its history of more than seven decades, the DSC has been acknowledged worldwide for its academic standards and rigorous teaching and research techniques it imparts to its students. It has always attracted the best of students from within the country and in many cases from neighboring countries. The DSC students across departments have not only been well trained in rigorous theory with quantitative orientation, but also have a wider perception of important social issues facing the country. The DSC character is fostered in a culture where research, teaching, and engagement with national issues go hand in hand. Therefore, it comes as no surprise that DSC alums 
have made it to the very top of excellence of the organizations and positions they have served. Mr. Narayanan is a shining example. Generations of DSC alums have served society with sincerity, distinction, and dedication. This year happens to be 75th year of glorious existence of the DSC. Today, we feel honored to have Sri Suresh Narayanan as our distinguished speaker. I welcome uh, Mr. Narayanan to your alma mater, your own home. Uh, welcome, uh, and I welcome everybody to, to the lecture. Thank you. Thank you, sir. I would now like to request Ta uh, Tanya Paila and Manya Gupta, first year students of DSC, to present a bouquet to welcome, sir. I would also request Professor Ram Singh and Professor Paramjeet to felicitate our distinguished speaker with a shawl and memento. Mr. Narayanan was appointed as the Chairman and Managing Director of Nestle India in August 2015 and is on the Board of Directors of Nestle India Limited. He also serves as the Chairman of the National Committee on Food Processing Industries. He is an Independent Director on the Board of Asian Paints Limited also in the Board of Governors of the Advertising Standards Council of India. Under Mr. Narayanan's leadership, Nestle India has been recognized by several media houses and industry forums. He was recognized as MNC in India of the year 2022 by All India Management Association. In 2021, he featured amongst the top 101 male gender equality champions globally. In the same year, Nestle India was conferred the Outstanding Company of the Year by CNBC TV 18's India Business Leader Awards. In 2020, Business Standard awarded Nestle India as the MNC of the Year, while Business World recognized Nestle India for Best Financial Performance in the MNC category and also bestowed the Purpose and Resilience. He was conferred CNBC Awards' Best Performing Leader for the MNC category in 2020. He was also honored as the Entrepreneurial CEO at EY Entrepreneur of the Year 2020. He was recognized amongst the most valuable CEOs in 2019 by Business World. And under his leadership, Nestle India won the Best Governed Company Award for 2018 by the Asian Center for Corporate Governance and Sustainability. Mr. Narayanan joined Nestle in 1999 as the Executive Vice President for Sales in India. His international career commenced from Nestle Indochina in 2003, and he has also served in Philippines, Singapore, Egypt, and the Northeast African region. He began his career as a management trainee with Hindustan Unilever, where he held numerous <coughs> positions of increasing responsibility in sales, marketing, and general management. He has participated in the Nestle Leadership Program of the London Business School, and has delivered talks at NASCOM forums, various corporates, NUS School of Business Singapore, and several others across India and the world. Thank you to everyone on the dais. And it is now my pleasure to invite Sri Suresh Narayanan to deliver the lecture titled, Leadership in a Volatile World. Young friends, and uh, it's a very, very, uh, it's a very special occasion for me, and I want to to thank Professor Ram Singh and all the faculty of the Delhi School of Economics for uh, inviting an alumnus of the Delhi School of Economics. He rightly called it a family. And even though I have passed out from Delhi School of Economics uh, well before any of you were born, <laughs> in fact, some of the faculty were also not born. <laughs> so I am an, I'm an old fossil of this uh, school. but. I nevertheless represent, uh, hopefully, 
some of the values and virtues uh, that Professor VKR Virao set out to do when he set up this institution in 1949. So we are celebrating 75 years. And uh, I think, as I was telling Professor Ram Singh and some of your other professors, east of the Swiss, this is the finest school of economics that there is. And there is no so it's a, it's a matter of delight, not only for me to be here, uh, you know, but nevertheless, I can recognize a few things. And I'm especially touched that my, my classmate and distinguished economist, Dr. Mohan Chutani, is also here. Thank you, Mohan, for being here. I think it's a special feeling as I walk down memory lane. When Professor Ram Singh discussed the topic of uh, what I would be talking about, since it's a distinguished lecture series, I said I will not talk about regression equations or about econometric <laughs> principles or about macroeconomics of the country, forward, backward, or indeed the economic history of this country during the Gupta age and how it is likely to evolve into the new millennium. Uh, because those are things that you already have enormous expertise to teach. And plus, yours truly in front of you did his master's in economics and then went on to do something allied but very different. So I am in <coughs> no position to come and give you a meaningful lecture on the principles of macroeconomics or game theory or capital theory or any of the other theories that you guys have been through. But to talk to you about a topic that might be of use to you because all I understand a batch today is about 300 odd uh, young, young people. All of you will be going out into the wide world and what is it that you can expect in the wide world is what I titled leadership in leading in volatile times because that's really the times in which we are living in. And I also want to assure you that four decades ago I was sitting there like you. I was no different except that I was not in the internet age. I was discussing with Mohan. We used to have the Rutten Data Library. That is the only school or the only place where we got our fountain of knowledge, apart from the professors, of course. There was no other link that we had anywhere to the outside world. And therefore, it was in a very closed economy loop that we were brought up in and were thrown out into the wide open world with our ideals and with our philosophies and with our value systems in a world that was quite brutal. Earlier it has been called volatile, uncertain, chaos and ambiguity. Today there is a beautiful, almost Indian sounding world called Bali, which is brittle, anxious, non-linear and incomprehensible. That, my young friends, is a world that surrounds you. So you are in this world with the benefits of modern technology, you know, as if Normal intelligence was not enough, now you have artificial intelligence also. So that is, that is going to have its own uh, piece of the pie. And numerous geopolitical and other uncertainties that surround it. It almost seems as if the world is tearing itself apart from a period of globalization that we used to celebrate. Today there are fractures across the world. Today there are inequalities across the world. Today there are inequalities in our own country. And therefore, there are numerous forces that not only signal economic growth, but numerous forces that also propel or dispel economic growth and progress in this country. And it is in those times that you will work, you will thrive, and you will find a mark for yourself. So, what I am proposing to talk to you in the next 40-45 minutes is a personal story. I am not a narcissist, I am not a megalomaniac. You don't have to appreciate or clap or feel happy at hearing some of what I have been through. <coughs> Mine is an illustration of a young 21 year old from the Delhi School of Economics who set out into the wide world wanting to be a bureaucrat. That's what I wanted to be. I wanted to be an IAS officer. 
And lo and behold, a company that never descended at the Delhi School of Economics called Hindustan Lever then and now Hindustan Unilever descended on this campus. And yours truly got selected. Wanting to do and be either a bureaucrat or to go ahead and be a monetary economist because my money and credit courses were my favorite courses. And Professor Suraj Ban Gupta, I don't know how many of you have even heard of him, I used to be the professor. I was absolutely awed by him, awestruck by the way in which he used to teach this beautiful subject. And somehow I said, okay, if I don't become an IAS officer, I'll become a monetary economist. And Milton Friedman was the, the big man then, and some of the faculty here had done their PhDs under Milton Friedman. So I said, even better. But fate willed otherwise. <laughs> and I'll go on to <clears throat> the story of what that evolved into. If there are only five lessons that you need to learn from my presentation, and this is really more as indicators. These are not gospel truths. You will lead your life. I will not lead your life. You will be responsible for the decisions and you will be responsible for what you make of it. Your parents will not be, your teachers will not be. They will be like the beacon that you look at. But they will not be the determinants of whether that happens or doesn't happen. So if there are five lessons that I would like to leave you with, and it's a good idea to start the presentation with the end messages, rather than waiting for the end messages. The first one is crisis is a new novel. This is the new reality that you're going to face. You're not going to have particularly normal days operating all across. And that means that you need to prepare yourself for it. Second, leadership defines how you cope with it. People look at it in the first 5, 10, 15, 20 years of your career, whether you're a professor or whether you're a analytical scientist or whether you are a economist or whether you are a business executive or whether you are an entrepreneur, goes in learning the ropes of the game. Technical competence and individual contribution become important. But a stage comes in life when nobody but nobody really is looking at what was your CGPA in micro. Nobody is interested. Whether you are, in my time, the highest accolade of academic excellence at the Delhi School of Economics was to do six econometrics papers. In MA final, if you did six econometrics papers and you did it under Professor A. L. Nagar, it was like you were next to God. And we used to look at them and say, wow, six tricks all I will. Ye to hai, right? And we were nowhere near. Do karke jaan jati thi maari, no? Right? And talk of six. But after a certain stage in life, it's leadership that counts. It's the ability to connect the dots that counts. It's the ability to move mountains and make rivers weep that count. And that's when leadership counts. And today in this world, if there is one element which is in complete short supply, whether it is the political world, whether it is the corporate world, whether it is the social world, or whether it is the economic world, it is leadership. There are no shortages of people with high polluting qualifications. But ask them to manage a subnormal or an abnormal situation, and they're all in fizzy. They go into Gantt charts and they go into mathematical equations, which makes sense to nobody. So leadership is going to be how you define and how you cope with it. And the third one, Managing the self is 50% of the solution. We don't pay attention to it. At, the, at different schools, and I don't say not only the Delhi School of Economics, but I also say I talk to various leaders at business schools, and I tell them there is a lot of emphasis on corporate strategy, analytical methods, financial management, macroeconomic theory, economic history, Microeconomics, econometrics. 
All this is important. All this is relevant. And you have, and you are fortunate to be at the best school that there is. And you also have the good fortune of having the best professors to teach you this. But what you need beyond this is the ability to manage yourself. Purpose, values, behaviors, ethics, honesty, humility, passion, commitment, pride, hard work, and happiness. Where does this come from? Who gives you these inputs in your career? You are either born with it, and many of us are born into families where this is an <coughs> integral part of our upbringing, or we are blessed to have teachers by the time you reach Delhi school, it's a bit too late. These are teachers in school. Who is it that we remember the most? You know, a couple of my classmates from school got together a couple of months back. And one of them asked a question. He said, do you remember your first boss? Do you remember your first friend? Or do you remember your first and most impressionable teacher? Everybody put up their hands and said, our first and most impressionable teacher. Because that teacher made a huge difference in our life. And that difference is made by the pursuit of purpose and values in your life. Therefore, in today's time, mental wellness is becoming a big issue. The most thriving startup, and if some of you are looking at startups, are two, health science, and mental science. Right? These are the two things. And I was reading somewhere that there are more institutions or more companies being set up in the mental wellness space, but they don't have the necessary specialists and psychologists to manage it. That's the shortage. And that's because of this inability. The inability to cope with failure, the inability to cope with success, the inability to cope with uncertainty is all part of managing yourself. And indeed, this translates into and feeds into the crisis that is going to surround you. So this is the third one. The fourth one, empowerment, enablement and engagement is the key. We are a society that celebrates individual excellence. When I get introduced, I get introduced as the chairman and managing director of Nestle. Sadly, nobody says that the Nestle team behind this man is the strength of his performance. Sadly, the work done by the most outstanding people whom I'm blessed to have as part of my team never gets reflected. The leader gets reflected. But in your own lives, if I were to leave one message with you, empower someone who has the power. Enable someone who is willing to be enabled and guide someone who is willing to be guided. Don't leave everything to yourself in the ultimate analysis, because it doesn't work. Tali two hands, the leader has two hands. One hand is one hand, one hand is his hand. And unless they come together, nothing happens. No success in life is attributable to one single person. No success in life. All of us, in our own lives, personal lives, we attribute it to our wives, to our husbands, to our children, to our grandparents, to our parents, to whoever. So remember that this is an important element. And last but not the least, something that was considered to be unfashionable some time back. When you talked about purpose and values, somebody used to say, Ki yaar ye dadi maa ki kaani suna hai. Lekin asliyat hoti hai dadi maa ki kaani se. We all go back to the stories and the stories of ourselves. What is your story is what you're going to carve out once you finish the Delhi School of Economics and get into the, the working life. You have a certain story and that story is defined by your purpose and your values. And this purpose is defined by you yourself. There are two big elements in our lives which try and influence our purpose. One is our parents. 
तुमने आई ए सी करना है तुम्हें पी एच डी करना है तुम्हें यही करना है तुम्हें वही करना है आई नॉट सींग दर बैड दे आर योर योर बेस्ट वेल विशर्स इन लाइफ आई योर पेरेंट्स एंड द सेकेंड इज वॉट यू कॉल इन्फ्लुएंसर्स वॉट यू कॉल रोल मॉडल्स मुझे ऐसे बनना है मुझे वैसे बनना है एंड यू ट्राई एंड एम्यूलेट देयर पर्पज देयर पर्पज इज देयर लाइफ योर लाइफ माइंड बी डिफरेंट and value systems are important to be honest to be ethical to be principled my young friends you might think i am sounding contrarian or you might think that i am sound sounding false this works this works and this can be made to work in your lives the question is do you have the courage and do you have the will to follow it? and if you follow it you can have a less successful life materially that's fine you will have one ferrari car less one apartment less in the riviera right 200 kilos of gold less but you might have better happiness and you might have better peace of mind so these are five messages which i think could be of some use to you let me put a little bit of this to my own context why do i talk about this i talk about this because i am a plain ordinary guy like any of you my parents my father was a technocrat he was a civil engineer who worked in the border roads organization so different roads you know the border you see durghatna se derbali right b b mr late rather than late mr wo sab वो बॉर्डर रोड्स वाले जो हैं क्रिएटिवली लगाते हैं हर पहाड़ों में माय फादर वाज वाज देयर ही वर अ स्मॉल फैमिली माय पेरेंट्स एंड एंड माय सेल्फ बट ही हैड ग्रेट रिस्पांसिबिलिटीज ऑलमोस्ट 30 टू 40 परसेंट ऑफ हिज सैलरी वेंट टू सपोर्ट हिज फैमिली बैक होम बिकॉज ही लॉस्ट हिज फादर सो ही हैड ब्रदर्स एंड सिस्टर्स एंड पेरेंट्स टू मेकअप माय पेरेंट्स डिसाइडेड टू स्पेंड 50 परसेंट ऑफ देयर सैलरी इन एजुकेटिंग i am eternally grateful for that so 80% of their salary which in those days i'm talking about 70s and 60s kya hoti thi bureaucrat ki salary and if you are a straight forward bureaucrat and honest bureaucrat there is no chance that you have anything else flowing in from the side with 20% they ran their life which means that luxuries for me was a no no that you had food on the table was a great thing you had breakfast lunch and dinner the first time i visited a five star hotel was when i was 28 years old after having joined in the sun even before that i had not seen the inside of a five star hotel ashoka hotel dekha tha bahar se par wo ashoka hi tha now it looks like a little bit like a mausoleum but then it looked like a five star hotel so i have been brought up on ground realities school that i believe the finest school in this country a school called rishi valley which is in the south near bangalore founded by the philosopher j krishnamurthy so the the principles and values were extremely strong in the way in which i was brought up then i've had exposure to three different organizations i told you about my hindustan liver experience but i can tell you one thing one learning from getting the job at hindustan liver when you were not interested and i was the first guy in my batch to be placed and professor ram singh was ta- talking over the break that we had earlier about the fact that the institution never encouraged people to get into the private sector when i got into hindustan liver one of my professors i should not name him looked at me and said suresh ab ja ke sabun bechega tu right i said theek hai sir me That's what it is. Okay, I will not do monetary economics. I will not do macro theory, but I will sell soap. Right? <coughs> so there was a certain disdain about it, which I think now times have changed. It's no longer that disdainful look because everyone contributes, every industry contributes, every job brings something to the table. But the second element, which I want to leave you with, when you are least interested in something. you are bindas and when you are bindas you do your best 
when you are bindas, you do absolutely your best. Mujhe koi fark nahi padi. Mujhe daukri do nahi do. Mujhe to IAS mein jana hai. I never applied for CAT exam, GMAT exam, this exam, that exam. Kuch nahi. SRCC, Economics Honors, D School. Uske baad IAS ke liye baith hai. Tab tak ye kambakat beech mein sabun wale aage. So the career took a turn. But I, 43 years on, have absolutely no regrets about it. I think I've led a life which I liked. I led a life which was reasonably successful. I was lead, uh, led a life where I could contribute and I would led, led a life where I could do something for people. And that is what my desire always was. I've had different exposures. It was talked about in Thailand, in Singapore, in Egypt during the Arab Spring. Right? Interesting times. When I went to Egypt, I was told, as the chairman of North Africa, saying, my boss told me in Switzerland, saying that nothing ever changes in Egypt. Nile eki disha mein bhati hai. The sand in the pyramids has not come down. Pharaonic system, dictators. Bas inka yehi hai. Chalta rahega. Jab tak ludak ke marega nahi, tab tak ho, he will be going around. So October 2010, I reached there. January 25th, 2011, Arab Spring starts, police day, and they want the, the leader to be thrown out. Hosni Mubarak finally after 14 days, after the tremendous work done by youth in Tahrir Square, finally decided to go. So there are some things that I learned out of this experience. The first lesson in life, and this is a, this is a lesson that I think Nelson Mandela taught us. The greatest glory in living lies not in never falling, but in rising every time you fall. <coughs> this will be the story of our lives. You think you're always successful, you will not be. All of us have had failures. Mujhse pucho. How many times I've bashed my head. When I got into Hindustan Lever, I felt extremely inadequate because I said I don't have management education. I was the only non-MBA in my whole batch. And one of them asked, Delhi school, Delhi school ke secretarial school hai? Mainne ka, nahi sir, economics ka school hai. Us, us jawaan mein log itna jante bhi nahi thai. And that is my second lesson. You can be inadequate, but never feel inadequate. Do something about it. Learn, read. Get yourself up to speed. All of this contributes to what you do. So the first couple of assignments, I was all over the place. Right? I didn't know quite what hit me. But then I settled in. So like Mandela said, I fell. But like the human that I encourage you to be is to dust yourself and say, we can do something else about it. We can do something more about it. And us na, Koi macro theory aapke kaam nahi aega. Koi economic history aapke kaam nahi aega. It will be what you are as a person, what values you have, and whether you have it in you to stand up and rise again. So this has been my career. It has been crisscrossed across. So it's not my purpose here to tell you where I went and how I went and, and what I did. But to just tell you that I have been blessed with a career that has gone across continents, across different situations across different cultures. What I have learned is every culture has strength. As Indians, when we travel, we think that there is only one Indian culture that matters. French bakwas, hai, German bakwas, hai, Swiss bakwas, hai, Arab bakwas, hai, sab bakwas. Hai. Right? Koi bakwas nahi. Everybody has got their own strength. And I think those of you who aspire to work in different continents will be well served to be tolerant of the cultures that you're working in. You can learn so much from this, from their cultures, that I think you can you can you can enrich yourself by just that. The Arab Spring. This was my first real brush with crisis. Stuck in a place, a beautiful city called Cairo. No internet, tanks outside the house, tanks outside the factory, no phone lines. I don't speak a word of Arabic, leading a team 
of Egyptians, Tunisians, Moroccans, Germans, French and Italians. I suddenly felt what the hell have I got into, right? Where the hell have I come? But then my wife and I discussed and we said, look, they have nothing against Indians. I mean, they have something against Hosni Mubarak. They have nothing against Indians. So let's make the best of this and let's stay here. So while the whole country was evacuating itself of expatriates who were catching flights and going out and their families were going out, my wife and I decided, along with my team, we allowed the families to go because some of them were getting very queasy with all the tanks and with all the firing happening, that we will stay there. And when you stay there, you make a big difference. Because the first lesson that I learned, and this was the lesson 15 days after the Arrow Spring began, my technical director who was an Italian and I went to our factories. There were two factories in Egypt. He was guessing and I was guessing and there were, there were riots and curfews around and we said, look, we have to open the factory because the factories have been closed for a long time. And we said, how many people will come? So I guessed, I said, maybe five people will turn up. One factory had 10% women. They had 1,000 employees and 10%, about 100 women were there. And he guessed, he said, no, maybe, maybe 10 people might come. I said, okay, whatever it is, the gates will be opened. Let's go to the factory. We went to the factory, 100% attendance, 100% people were there. I didn't know Arabic, but I asked my friend, I said, ask them, why have they come? Egyptians are like us. If you, if you want to really know the, the characteristic of Egyptians, they are very much like us. They look like us. But they are bigger pekus than us. <laughs> that is their characteristic. They are, they are very good. They have got a deadly sense of humor. Every crisis meeting will start with a joke. And once there was a, a, one of my bosses in Switzerland who was dialing in. And he said, Suresh, what's, what's wrong? You guys are going through a crisis and there are jokes floating around. I said, this is the way we work. We have a good sense of humor and, and we joke around. So when I asked these people, why did you come? They said, sir, two reasons. One, this company, Nestle Egypt, has fed us, fed our children, looked after our families, looked after our elders, being with us through thick and thin. This company we will never ever betray. And second, you never left us. Do you think we will leave you? These are people of different cultures. You think why will they get attracted towards an Indian? I have nothing. In their language I would be a kafir. I'm not. They look at your, you as a leader and they say that you have stayed. So the first principle in managing a crisis and in leadership, a leader never leaves. That's the picture of the factory, the ice cream factory with my, with my colleagues. It made a huge impact on me because I realized that in a crisis, in difficult times or in managing people, there are two forms of leadership. One is the invisible form of leadership. That is Gaya Braho or Katputlo Ke Saath Kaam Karte Ro. Right? You have puppets who do the job for you. The other thing is visible signs of leadership. What leadership works in the context of organizations, as indeed it does for economies and countries, is a visible form of leadership. And that was what I learned in this crisis. People are at the heart of everything. When the crisis began, companies were shutting down. So I caught my team together and I said, Look guys, what do, you, what do we want to do as a team? Do we want to shut down operations? Or do we engage more with the community, engage more with the consumers, engage more with the market, launch more brands, invest more? Their answer was, sir, we are all Egyptians. We want to see the progress of this country. Let us invest more, let us engage more. And we promise you, we will do our damnest. None of your efforts will be failed as far as we are concerned. I'm not talking about altruism. I'm talking about genuine passion and pride in doing what you do. In those five years that I was there, we grew at an average rate of 25% per annum. And we invested more in five years than we invested in the previous 20. And at a time when there were riots, there was one company that was represented on the shelf 
for people to buy when the, when the curfew time was removed. And that was necessary. Did I pay them an extra pound? Did I give them an extra reward? Did I give them an extra bonus? <coughs> Nothing. Commitment, enablement and empowerment. This is all that worked. And because people are the center of everything, remember one thing. Apne aap ko jada mat samjho. Kali aat aaye ho, kali aat jaoge. That's the reality of life. You're all very young. I should be talking about kali aat jaunga. I'm closer to the, to the grave as compared to any of you. But I can tell you this, what happens to leaders is hubris. I am the greatest, I am the biggest, I am the boldest, I am the best. Right? Have this feeling that you want to be the best. But when you become the best, give credit to the team that has made you the best. And I think when you center yourself on people, you do a lot of things very differently. The third lesson in life. All of us look at adversity with <coughs> fright. <coughs> we are scared. Kayamat mere darwaje pe kyun aai? Why is it that I am facing difficulties? When we all look at assignments, and all of you, God willing, once you finish your MAs, will get good assignments in good organizations, or you will do something on your own. You will take the softest assignment because you want to have the safest bet in your life. My suggestion to you is contrary. Take the toughest assignments because in adversity you will learn more than you will ever learn in good times. Haryali mein tote bhoot bolte hain. Kayamat mein kuchhi log aate hain saam mein. You be the one who comes forward in Kayamat. You be the one who comes forward in difficult times. Because you will learn far more from it. And this lesson was reinforced in my own life as I went along. So after doing five years in Egypt, I was sent off to Philippines, which is a nice posting for us. It's a good country, great place, one of the largest markets that we have. It's one country where the President of the Republic will change his agenda to see you, if need be, because you are the largest consumer goods company in that, in that, in that country. So I was very happy. I said, at long last. Till the call came. And that, that call was the Maggie crisis. Right? Is it interesting to you at all? Yes. Okay. So this happened. So I, I got the call from my CEO saying that, you know, there's this problem in India. Can you please go and fix it? My first reaction was, Kambakhat. Teri. Kismat. Ki tu hi ek mila. Teen lakh dus hajar employees hain is company mein. Or tu hi ek mila. Papa jane ke. You are the only fellow. Chosen one. Then I called up my father. My father was alive then. So I called him up. I, you know, everyone has some anchor in their family. For me, my anchor was my father. So I called him up. I said, Papa, mujhe bula rahe. So he was an old school man. I remember Border Roads organization. He said, Beta, duty. You better come here. Turanta. Kya question kya pooch rahe? And I know that, but if I come, you know, if something happens, if something goes wrong. He says, there are two things. One, if you are in the middle of the situation, then you will not sit down to the biggest The company will have some trust in you. That's why they want to send you. And secondly, what is the worst that can happen? You will fail. Retirement will take. Madras will come. Hindu will read Hindu papers. Coffee will drink. Mandir will go. Dhoti penenge or kya? What else can happen? Anything worse than this can happen? I said, nothing worse than this can happen. This is the time and the choice is clear. And the second reason for me which was important is my fortunes and my nurturing has been in this organization. For me, this Nestle symbol that I wear is a matter of great pride. I take a lot of pride in it because this organization has made me. People today associate me with this organization. And that is the blessing that I've got. So I said, okay, I'll take the challenge. Remember an important lesson in a crisis. 
when you worry about yourself you don't worry about your people you don't worry about your crisis when you don't worry about yourself i was in my early to mid 50s so i said kya hoga bas maximum what will happen they will end my career or kya hoga but if i were to improve the lives of my people and give them support and help the company come out of this mess i think that it's a greater glory that the organization can achieve so in crisis do not focus on yourself focus on the others whether it is your personal crisis or it's your professional crisis i think it's important to have this thing in mind this was a massive crisis as you know i mean all of you are consumers of maggi this became a this became a huge point almost 400000 farmers 1.3 million outlets 1700 distributors 6500 field force 9000 employees it spread across to bangladesh it spread across to sri lanka and it was like a perfect storm at that time there was no gst no gmon demonetization no nothing so every day newspaper mein ye aata tha right my announcement was like a banner headline in economic times that said indian comes to save swiss company everybody garv hoti hai indian comes to save almost like superman right <laughs> that's how you the, the 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 sense that you get but then remember as a as a leader you have to come here and you have to face the storm i did my first public interview with cnbc with shireen ban not having done a public interview ever in my life never had done tv ke samne kaun jata hai right the only time i had done was in egypt which was in english it was lip synced into arabic and a friend of mine told me egyptian fellow he said what arabic you speak kam se kam ek word nahi boli maine ye pura sink hua hua right so that was my experience but then you you realize that the role that a leader plays at these times is very different the leader plays a role of a father the leader plays a role of a brother because nestle for those of you who may not know is a tenure company 25 साल 30 साल 35 साल 40 साल जो है आराम से लोग काट लेते हैं इट्स एन एसेंशियल पार्ट ऑफ देयर मेकिंग इट्स यू जॉइन अ कंपनी यू रिटायर फ्रॉम अ कंपनी आई हैव एवरी ईयर आई गो टू मोगा व्हिच इज आवर फैक्ट्री इन द पंजाब एंड देयर आर एट लीस्ट 30 टू 40 पीपल हु गेट 35 ईयर अवार्ड्स द पगड़ी ऑफ द सरदार द सूट ऑफ द सरदार एंड द सलवार कमीज ऑफ हिज वाइफ is color coordinated also the shoes they come as if they are getting married so i asked them i said why do you do this they said sir after our wedding day this is the second most important day of our life we come and we believe in this company that has given us so much and this award from your hand is bigger than any other award that we will ever get so such people get violently shaken they get violently shaken because suddenly you face a threat that the company might close down and you lose your job logo ke bacche pad rahe hain bitiyon ki shaadi karni hai ladkon ki shaadi karni hai koi padhna chahta hai koi kuch aur karna chahta hai father mother who it is is the fulcrum of that that role is played by the leader so more than 50% of my time was spent with my employees 30% of my time was spent with the environment trying to douse the fires and 20% of the time was spent on operations so you might think i spent all my time on operations no i spent my more of my time on nurturing the relationships and assuaging the people who needed to be managed but ultimately again something happens if you give people a purpose magic happens the only mantra that people had in the company was get maggi back and at that time everybody but everybody there were people youngsters who postponed their weddings postponed their holidays postponed whatever personal engagements they put themselves into the task of the company so therefore packaging material that takes normally 42 days came out in 9 days it broke all the timelines Raw materials came out in five days. 
point of sale material came out in 20 days, which takes three times that period, system readiness, campaigns, etc., which take twice, three times the time, were happening at a much quicker pace. This also helped us post the crisis to set the timelines for the company and say, look, if you can do this in nine days, why should we do it in 45 days? Why can't you improve your standards? So that also becomes an important element of this. People, the packaging manager was traveling with the truck. You may think this is unbelievable, but they did it. Who paid them for it? Nobody paid them for it. They did it on their own. Machines were started which had been shut down for six months, were started within 24 hours, within 48 hours. We have at least 5,000 suppliers. We have 2,000 distributors. We have 9,000 employees. Not one of them went to the media and said, Our chore company is aisa kiya, aisa kiya. Culture speaks. Culture is the language that is spoken when nobody is speaking. That's why it's very important when you join, wherever you join, first look at the culture of the organization. Kya log wahan niyat ke saath rehte hain aur unki niti bhi hai. Niti is important. Niyat is vital. You can have all the rule books. Everybody has got standard operating procedures. But then if you don't have niti, if you don't have niyat, there is nothing that can make the organization work. So this happened. Never lose the winning spirit. What is the role of a leader during a crisis? It was not that I was doing anything. I still don't do anything. Right? I don't sell. I don't produce. I don't. I don't total up the numbers. I don't do anything. I am the orchestra conductor. An orchestra conductor is somebody who knows every element of the music, but doesn't make a noise. Doesn't make a sound. It is the musicians who make the sound. The role of the leader is like an orchestra conductor to ensure that the best music is done but that he keeps the spirit of the organization. The biggest role of the leader is to give hope. And you know what leadership is? Leadership is not leading others. Leadership is being more confident in yourself. When you are more confident in yourself, you are willing to let go. Our biggest thing is that we all become micro I want to do everything that you do. Even 10 places up, I will still want to do everything that you do because I say, sir, I was the best analyst that you ever had. So, leadership about hope, leadership about confidence, and the third element of leadership. A leader doesn't know all the answers. Our orientation kya hoti hai leadership ki? Leader knows all the answers. Khaki knows all the answers. If the guy can drive himself from his office to his house, it's a big deal. Right? Where is he talking about knowing what they think? And in a crisis, a leader has to be vulnerable. Nobody should get the impression that all the answers are known, everything is seen. You have to keep the confidence and spirit. Imagine if I were to address my team after a Maggie crisis and come and say, come back to tumare karan meri this one joe puti hai and already left a nice country, come here, idiots, do something, tum logo ne kya kiya, wagera. How is it going to help? These are all the principles of leadership that makes for winning to happen. Never waste a crisis. Ab jo ho gaya, so ho gaya. Don't, don't try and engineer a crisis. Right, so don't try and do test marketing. Ki chalo, thik hai, aag laga ke dekhte hai kya hota hai. Right, but when it happens, it's a good opportunity to question all the practices and all the principles that you adopted over a period of time. Organizations are like pyramids. They create plaque. You have layers and layers and layers of systems. Tumhari jaise, on har bachi aajate hain, kuch suggest karte hain ki aise koro, aise koro, aise koro, format bana jati hai, reporting kiya jata hai. I remember when I was a sales director of the company, I told one of my Sales analyst, I have 200 reports every day. From today, from today, from today, you send 100 reports to the day. Look at what happens. He said, sir, it will become a lot of trouble, sir. It will become a lot of trouble. People will chill out in the company. I said, let's see. Sensibly, let's choose 150 reports. You won't believe it. Nobody even responded. 
because most of the reports were delete on receipt. Miltei delete button. And among number of man hours that is spent in making those reports. So we did this and we said, what is the strength of company? Our strength of a company is the number of brands. We have globally 2,000 brands. Family planning and the brands keep community. So we said, our innovation rate, if we increase, the problem for Nestle is not what to launch, but when to launch. We don't have a shortage of ideas. Ideas so ugly, so salkle. My generation and succeeding generation and going on, after I'm long after I've gone from this planet, will still continue to be launching new products and new innovations for the company. But the question is, how do you pace up the innovation rate? So today we are innovating at a rate about three times more than what we ever done in the past using the same processes, the same systems, but by accepting failure and accepting that failing to succeed will help you to succeed to succeed. So, num number of new products, some of which, and your latest one is, you're going to be tasting it, called Korean noodles. Fantastic, eh? One bowl, you'll eat one bowl, you'll eat one bowl, you'll So this is the other message. And I think Steve Jobs said it beautifully. He said, you cannot connect the dots looking forward. You can only connect them looking backwards. So you have to trust the dots will somehow connect in the future. That's what the future is. The future is not determinate. Jitna bhi aap equation kar do, jitna bhi aap ka R squared dikha de, tab bhi niya jo hai, baut hi goal hai. Right? Predictability of the future is the unpredictability of it. And that is how important this becomes. And I talked about failing to succeed. I think this is important. Examples here, penicillin. Alexander Fleming <coughs> was frustrated in not being able to extract the penicillin vaccine. He goes on holiday, comes back and finds the mold on his petri dish. The rest is history. The bubble paper was originally meant to be a wallpaper. Till somebody told the fellows that you are making wallpaper, you will wrap it in a good way, fragile items, you will be a packing material. Ho and ever since then, it has become a packing material. I put a brand there called Tree Top, which is what I launched. One of the biggest disasters in the fruit drink industry. <laughs> biggest disasters. But I learned a lesson in this. The boss of the project, I was a junior assistant brand manager. The boss of the project, the vice president, when the disaster happened, he stood up and he said, I am responsible. I will leave in Pachon Kochoro. Leadership is to be stand up and be counted. A cheaper kazir saati hai, a cheap motor aati hai, a cheap sabkuj aati hai, a cheap ghar bilta hai, sabkuj acha hai. But then, when your chips are down, is when the leadership counts. So let me leave you with a few leadership lessons, which might be of use to you. This is all perspectives. These are not, these are not gospel truths. There is opportunity in adversity. You are going to be in an adverse world, find opportunity in it. <coughs> Don't expect perfection. Everything is not going to be hunky-dory. Everything will have a little bit of, of, of kankar patthar hongi way. Don't be afraid of uncertainties. I think the important thing is to build your psyche. When you apply to 20 jobs, you may get rejected by 19. That's a hard reality that you have to face. You may be brilliant yet you may not get what you want. Accept it. And like Nelson Mandela said, gather yourself and go for it. Teamwork and achievement will drive credibility. Ultimately, this is what makes for leadership. Always strive for can do, then we'll try. You know, there are two kinds of peoples in crisis. One is called the Gantt chart experts. Sir, aag lagi hai, abhi fire station ko bulate hai, wo tender nikalenge, phir raasse mein aayenge, phir pani ka hydrant dhoonna hai, phir CDA dhoonni hai, ye dhoonni hai, wo dhoonni hai. And there are some other fellows, jinko hum log kehte hai, moti dimaag ke log, jo kehte hai, sir, we will do it. You need in this world more, we will do it, rather than we'll try. People are the center of everything that you do. Ultimately, my own experience has been, Whatever limited success I've had, and mine is not the most stellar career. Professor Ram Singh was very kind in his words. But there are many people like me who have done reasonably well in life. But 
For me, people are at the center of everything that you do. Volatility, keep a plan B ready. Always have a plan B ready. Don't assume that the flow is going to be linear. Equation of the Manate Roh, like in regression may dependent coefficients, you have change with the ring. You have to make that as your as your plan. Never lose your winning spirit. I think that's ultimately important. Attitude more than aptitude will get you to the happiness that you seek. We are always focused more on the aptitude, less on the attitude. Focus on building the aptitude today. Today you need to have the aptitude. But tomorrow you need to have the aptitude and the attitude to make things happen. Keep your eyes on reality, reality, reality. The more senior you become, the more people define reality for you. Right? When a crisis happens, people will come and tell you, Sir, aapke bina to company chalegi nahi. Aap bolte ho, the sun rises in the east and sets in the west. Kal boliye, Sir, ulta, ulta ho jayega. Right? There are two kinds of people in this planet, or three actually. One is those people who come to meetings, biscuit, biscuit, khale te hai, cake way, khale te hai, kuch bolte nahi hai. Maun brat dharan ke aate hai, maun brat dharan ke jate hai, biscuit ko khatam kar dete hai. Right? These are the harmless souls. Kuch nahi karenge, kuch na kaho, kuch na kaho, socho, bas. The second characteristic people are the naysayers. Hove na. Cholbe na. Dita hove. Right? These are the fellows who will say, nahi chalega, nahi hoga, dena padega. These are good people to have in a crisis because they will instigate you to find solutions. And the third are Aap Jaisa Kuli. They are the most dangerous people. Run away from them. Because they will fail for you to see reality. They will fail for you to see reality. Reality is defined by what you see. As a leader, you have to take the reality call. The buck stops at your desk. You can't pass on the buck. You're not a politician passing it on to somebody else, passing it on to somebody else. You can't pass it on to anybody else. You are the one responsible. When there is a crisis, when the factory is on fire, when there is people burning, people dying, people will come and ask you, what are you doing about it? Not ki kal baat karin ke aap se. Aap reasoning nikali hai. Constantly communicate, not less but more. If you aspire for leadership, you don't have to be the most riveting oratorial genius that there is. You just have to communicate simply. And communicating simply is a very difficult task for many of us because we are taught to talk in pahilis. Goom phira ke kuch baat karo. Sida kabhi baat nahi karenge. Because that is, in our dictionary, it's a sign of a weak mind. Aray yaar, itna sida bula asne. Itna bada company ka MD hai. Kya gyan diya asne? What did Albert Einstein do? Took the most abstruse concept of the physical and the virtual space and gave you a theory of relativity which is conceptually clear to most people who read it. The sign of a powerful mind is the ability to manage complexity and communicate it simply. In organizations, when you, when you listen to your lecturers and professors, whom do you appreciate most? Those who tell you directly and simply what you are listening to or those who give you stuff that goes straight above your head. When you come to learn, you don't want to come with an inferiority complex. You should be that I am here, I am here to learn and I will learn fully because the communication is clear. And finally, keep to your values. <coughs> keep to your values. Be humble. Kabir said this beautifully. Jab mai tha, tab hari nahi. Ab hari hai, mai nahi. Sab andhyara mit gaya. Jab deepak dekhe mai. Don't allow the force of arrogance and hubris to get to you. You will achieve in life you will do in life what you are meant to do. Two things that I would leave you with. 
develop relationships in life, develop some hobbies in life. Don't think that you are the greatest person who is alive and always be humble about what you achieve. Because remember that 6 out of 10 friends that you will have in your life will be those who respect your chair. There will be 4 people who will respect the person that you are. And that is the hard reality. Listen and stay connected. Listen and stay connected. And I'd like to leave you, because we're all young people, we are all living in strange times when strange communications take place. I'd like to leave you with another Doha of Kabir. Aisi bani boliye, man ka apa khoye, auran ko shital kare, aapu shital hoye. Talk with respect, talk with dignity, talk with humility, talk with purpose, talk with values. Even if you are not the most rivetingly successful businessman on this planet, you will be the happiest and most loved person in your community. Thank you all very much. Professor Parandit to deliver a word of thanks. I am thankful to Professor Ram Singh for providing this opportunity to thank you all. Uh, first in this series, I am the first person is Professor Pamidua because uh, she has definitely framed or engineered this whole series of <coughs> lectures. And then again, Suresh Naranji, who has given this opportunity to uh, meet with him. Director of office, Sri Bhopal Chanji, Surinder Kumarji, former HOD. SO and Minaji, office, director office, Ms. Goody, Mr. Balam, Mr. Stis, electrician, Mr. Bahadur, CD staff, Rajesh, Sonvir, Raju, Shivi, Mrithunjay, HOD office staff, Soniji, and Sphai Karamcharis in Delhi School of Economics, gardening staff, engineering department, and students representative of placement cell representative, students Gayatri and others, and some others, if I forgot some of the name, the invisible hands. Thank you all.